Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back. I'm back. Uh, we t I took a break uh, from doing Facebook Lives uh, for a few weeks uh, in order to do the World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship. It was an awesome event and uh, we had some incredible athletes. Um, you can go to our uh, webpage at World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship to see the pictures, uh, to see some videos of the event. It was pretty incredible. So before we get started, welcome. My name for, for those of you who are just tuning in. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We are a plant-based fitness nutrition company. So I go over the science on nutrition and exercise. I'm a 38 year vegan and 60 years of age, best shape of my life. Um, this video is for informational and educational purposes only. Is it not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease? But I am here to show you a really cool study. One of the largest studies ever, the largest study ever on exercise and its impact on health and specifically disease states, which they looked at cardiovascular disease, cancer, and all-cause mortality. All-cause mortality is science uh, uses as a terminology for all of the causes of death. Uh, disease states mostly, obviously not uh, getting in a car accident <laughs> or something like that. Um, but those that can be caused by uh, diet or exercise, lifestyle. Okay, but before we get into this, the American Heart Association already recommends uh, at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise or, quote, 75 minutes of vigorous intense aerobic workouts per week spread across three days. Now, they additionally incorporating strength training exercises at least two days a week uh, for all major muscle groups to improve uh, health outcomes. Um, so I'm going to talk about all, all the different bodies of research, but this one in particular uh, just came out. It was a recent study. The study was called Non-Occupational Physical Activity and the Risk of Cardiovascular Disease, Cancer, or Mortality Outcomes, a dose-response meta-analysis of large perspective studies. Okay, so this was a really huge study, really incorporating a lot of people and a lot of studies. So it's, it's called a meta-analysis. So it's looking at all the basic studies that have solid uh, formations were done, uh, double-blind placebo-controlled, things like this. So they're looking at some of the best studies, and they looked at 196 articles, 94 cohorts, which are studies, with 30 million participants in these studies. So uh, in general, what they were looking at is the more people exercised, how did that impact uh, uh, lowering of risk of health disease states? So I'm gonna jump to the conclusion because I think pretty much everybody else is gonna know, hey, look, yeah, you know, we know that uh, exercise is probably gonna improve health and therefore probably decrease disease uh, states risk outcomes. That's kind of kind of a given. But this was a huge study, and the impact from a huge study. So when you do small studies, sometimes the impact is pretty big. But when you do lots of people in it, the impact can can get smaller and smaller. That's a typical thing. So the bigger the amount of people that you look at, the higher the degree of certainty. That's what they call a. a certainty index or CI. That's how much they feel positive that this, this study or this look at the study, because it included so many people, they feel really confident about the results of this study. So what did they find? Well, they found all-cause mortality was reduced by 31%. So your, your risk for any causes of death went down 31% the more you exercised. Now, they looked at the exercise and when they were looking at it, they found from zero up into about two and a half hours a week, 
that was the sweet spot where they had the biggest difference. Obviously, if you're sedentary, you're going to be a lot higher risk for disease states. Um, when you include physical activity, this is where an inactive person can greatly increase their odds. So it wasn't really a lot, uh, 150 minutes a week, which is only about two and a half hours, um, uh, 21 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. That's all the exercise it took to decrease your risk of all cause mortality by 31%. Now, you know, people say, I hear people say all the time, oh, I don't have time to exercise. You don't have 20 minutes in a day to reduce your risk of early death by 31%. Find 20 minutes in your day, for God's sakes. I mean, that's just crazy what people are saying that I don't want. You know, you spend 20 minutes watching TV. Well, you could be 20 minutes of exercise. You spend 20 minutes a day probably brushing your teeth and going to the bathroom. Not that you stop brushing your teeth or going to the bathroom, but you can find the time in 20 minutes of the day of stuff that you're doing and waiting in line probably close to 20 minutes a day. I mean, there's so many other things you could do to save a little time and carve out that 20 minutes a day to reduce your risk of early death by disease states. Not only just dying, but having those disease states out in pharmaceutical drugs and doctor visits and time missed from work. Yeah, that's not worth it. That's really not worth it. So, um, what they actually found, and I'm going to quote this directly from the study that cardiovascular disease reduced by 29%, all cause mortality reduced by 31%, cancer reduced by 15%. But I'm actually going to talk about a, one of the research studies that shows even a more pronounced effect when you combine it with a healthy diet. But when they looked at all of this, they found, and this is a quote, that 15.7% of all premature deaths would have been averted if people simply exercised roughly 20 minutes a day. Wow. That is 55 million Americans that would not have died prematurely by simply exercising 20 minutes a day. Wow, it's that big an impact. That's why exercise is so important. Make it important for you. Take the time, make the time to get that exercise in. It's that important. Okay, so I just talked about cancer. I'm gonna pull up another study. Well, let me go ahead and put the, uh, the study in the link as I always do so that you can read it at home. I will put it in the comment section and then post it up on the screen so that uh, if you don't see it in the comments section, um, you can get it right here on the screen. All you have to do is stop the video, write it down or copy and paste it into uh, YouTube and you can look up these uh, studies and see for yourself the results. Um, okay, so the next study we're gonna talk about is this cancer study. So this is a, a pretty interesting study because it looked at prostate cancer, but it wasn't just about prostate cancer. I'm gonna put this one up on the screen while I talk about it, and then you can follow along. So myokines are, are one of our immune responses to help killing and destroying and even preventing cancer rates. So they found that when you exercise, especially intense exercise, or what they call in the science community, chronic exercise, that's really intense exercise, like training with weights or something. So not just casual exercise like walking or uh, playing with a dog or, or, or something like that, but intense exercise where you're actually putting a lot of effort into it. This is why, you know, uh, resistance training can be so important. Not only does it increase bone health and bone density, but it also can help with diabetes. It can help with uh, even cancer in this situation. So this is what they found. I'm going to put this quote right in, in the comment section and pull it up on the screen, too, so you can read along with it. I don't know if it'll fit on the screen, but let's take a look and show it on the screen. Yes. Okay, so the patient's level of anti-cancer myokine increased in three months of exercise. But it's interesting 
that a single bout of exercise significantly increased myokines. So they took this, this is, this is really neat. They took the blood of somebody who hadn't exercised and they put it in with the prostate cancer cells. Now they took somebody who had just exercised and took their blood because exercise increases myokines. Myokines then can actually trigger the body to destroy cancer cells through natural killer cells and T cells. All right, so they took the blood of someone who had just exercised and put it over the cancer cells and they found it decreased the risk of cancers. So I'm going to put that quote right up on the screen too. And then uh, I'll go ahead and read it to you uh, as we put it up on the screen. So when we took their pre-exercise blood and their post-exercise blood and placed it over living prostate cancer cells, we saw significant suppression of growth from those cells only from the post-training blood. This is how exercise can help. It can help reduce by increasing myokines, suppress tumor activity. So this is really cool. Now, you know, you're saying, well, I'm a female. I don't have a prostate. Why should I be concerned with this? Because of this statement from the researcher. Myokines in and of themselves don't signal the cells to die, Mr. Kim, the, one of the researchers in the study, but they do signal our immune cells, T cells, to attack and kill the cancer cells. We believe this mechanism applies to all cancers, breast cancer, uterine cancer, lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, all skin cancers. These are all cancers that they're assuming the same type of function. As we exercise, we boost up our myokines, and then those myokines trigger a cascading effect, which can reduce, suppress, even kill cancer cells. That's why this is so important. So you've got a 31% reduction of all-cause mortality, 29% reduction in um, in cardiovascular disease, and a, a significant reduction in cancer cells just by simply doing this. Well, what about diabetes? Well, this study, oh, let me go ahead and put it in the uh, comment section too, looked at just that. In the comment section, you'll see this in different effects of lifestyle intervention in high and low risk pre-diabetes. Uh, it's the results of a RCT, randomized controlled, placebo controlled trial uh, on the lifestyle intervention. Now, this quote from this is really impressive. <laughs> so I'll just put the quote right up on the screen. Well, first, let me show you the study. There's the study so you can read it yourself. And then here's the quote from it. Diabetes risk reductions up to 70% with a strenuous physical exercise and, and, and diet. So they took the diet and then they added exercise to it and it increased and lowered the risk of diabetes. But the more intense the exercise, the greater the increase in a uh, decrease in risk of diabetes. So the more intense you're exercising, the more you're causing a whole bunch of different mechanisms going on that help the body reduce body fat, bring it back down to normal levels. It's a whole, and the more intense, the better. So they found that by modifying the amount of exercise and the intensity of the exercise, it greatly increased it. Up to 60% of this were called non-responders. They were diabetics that were on the American Diabetes Association diet and exercise and still did not move the needle enough to actually become uh, in a place where they could be considered non-diabetic or diabetic safe. So they increased only the exercise, didn't change the diet at all. They and this is the American Diabetes Diet <laughs> Association uh, diet, uh, their recommendation for diet. And they just increased the intensity and duration of the exercise 
And that significantly improved most of the rest of people who are not responding to moderate or, or modest uh, amounts of exercise. So the intensity and the duration and the consistency does matter. Okay, brain health. This one's probably, <laughs> this one's probably even, you know, more impressive than almost all of the studies showing that. And all of the rest of those studies are showing amazing benefits. Um, but let me get this one up on the screen. Uh, so this is the combined effect of physical activity and fruit and vegetable intake on decreasing cognitive decline, mental brain health, right? Okay. So this one looked at, um, okay, what happens when you have high fruit and vegetable intake? Obviously, if you're eating more fruits and vegetables by process of elimination, you are consuming less animal products because more of it is plant-based. Okay, what happens when they do that? They saw a 40% decline in uh, uh, a, a decrease in cognitive decline. So you had a 40% better outcome for your brain health, 40% just by consuming fruits and vegetables. But the cool part is what would happen when you combined exercise with the fruit, high fruit and vegetable intake? And this is what keeps me excited about being <laughs> vegan and physically fit is boom. The risk of cognitive decline decreased 63% when high physical activity and high fruit and vegetable intake were combined. 63, that's two thirds better outcomes for your brain health. Two thirds less risk of cognitive decline just by combining a high physical activity and high fruit and vegetable diet. Well, that gives me a lot of hope. I'm 60 years old. My brain's working just fine. And I want to keep it that way till I hit 100 or better. You know, recent research has showed based on our DNA, if we give the body optimal health, optical, physical fitness, good air breath, de-stress, good rest, good sunlight, the human being is designed to last to approximately 122 years of age. That is our maximal lifespan, according to our DNA, based on the recent research that just came out last year. 122. If we're dying in 60 and 70, we're only living half of our potential lifespan. Do you think diet and exercise matters? I do. That's why I do what I do. That's why I am so excited to be involved in this give back. You know, people say, why do you talk about health and nutrition? Why do you talk about fitness all the time? You know, I just had a meeting recently with some friends and they said, why do you talk about veganism so much? And, and you know, when you have information like this, when I'm reading these studies each day and showing how powerful diet, a plant-based, a whole food plant-based diet, coupled with exercise and intense exercise, exercise like you would do in nature. In nature, if you're going to build a shelter, you're going to really be breaking trees and putting up things. You're going to be working, putting the work in, and you got to put the work in before the day goes, oh, you want to have a shelter. That's the type of exercise that we need to be doing, reincorporating in our modern life. And it really only takes about 20 to 30 minutes a day worth of exercise to get these impressive health benefits from it. And imagine if you did more, if you ate more plants, whole food plants, if you exercise more, what could you optimally expect? You know, uh, exercise even increases collagen levels, our own body's production of collagen. So as long as you're getting enough vitamin C, which is key to collagen production, which is abundant in all the plant foods. And remember, there's almost no vitamin C in any animal foods. It all comes from plants. When you consume vitamin C and have sufficient amino acids, that's your protein intake. If you have sufficient protein, exercise increases collagen production. That's why at 60 years old, I barely have wrinkles on my skin. Yes, there are other factors, high polyphenols, uh, not getting too much exposure to sun. But these things, combining all of these plant foods plus 
exercise can give your skin a healthy glow, the elasticity, the, the effects that you want. You can look great, feel great, and be strong in your 60s, 70s, 80s, into 100 even. That's what our design, our physiological design is designed for, this amazing machine we're born into. That's what I want for you. When people say, Jeff, why do you talk about health and nutrition so much? If I knew all this information, if I knew that I could help people not have to suffer, that, that I knew information that could help them live long, that could help them live healthier, that can live a life without disease states, without suffering, without having to burn up all their money on hospital bills, medical bills, pharmaceutical bills, insurance bills. If I kept that information from people, that would be unethical to me. It would be unethical for me to not share this information. It would be wrong of me. I'm not that kind of person. I want to help people. That's why I share it. That's why I take time out every Thursday here at four to share the latest information. So you have the information. The choice is still yours. What you put in your mouth is up to you. I can't make that decision for you, but I can give you information that can help you make the best decisions for you. If you don't care about life and you want it to go over, you're probably going to eat all the crap you want. But for those of you who enjoy life, who love living, who feel like it's important for you to be here for the ones who care about you, who depend on you, your wife, your family, your kids, your husband, your your brothers and sisters, your, your co-workers, people who really care about you and want you here. If you care about them, you want to be there for them. You want to not be in a suffering state. When I see other people suffering, it makes me hurt because I don't want to see them suffer. And if I can do something about it, I will do it. And this is what I do. I hope you enjoyed this information. Please share, give it a thumbs up, like it, make some comments. If you have any questions, you can always put those questions right down the links. I will answer all of them, I promise. And let's get this information out to more people. Let's help people. That's what we're here for. And that's why I see my purpose on this planet is to help as many people as possible before it's my time to leave. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you enjoyed this research because the research is really profound in how we can help other people. Thank you for watching. I'll be back again next week with some more great information, great studies coming out all the time. Thanks for all the great information that's being passed out there. And finally, we're getting some good information, which includes those on a plant pure diet. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.